Welcome everyone. Today we are going to see about reproduction in plants and animals that is unit 17. The learning objectives in this lesson are at the end of this lesson the students will be able to differentiate vegetative, asexual and sexual reproduction. Describe the parts of the flower and their functions. Understand the types and modes of pollination and their significance. Understand the process of double fertilization, steps involved in fertilization, syngamy and triple fusion embryo development, endosperm development and formation of seed. Introduction Living organisms cannot survive for an indefinite period on earth. All living organisms have the ability to produce more of its kind by the process called reproduction. Reproduction is the unfolding of life forms where new individuals are formed. It ensures continuity and survival of the species. This process is to preserve individual species and it is called as self Perpetuation. The time required to reproduce also varies from organism to organism. You may find great variation in period of reproduction in yeast, bacteria, rat, cow, elephant and humans. In sexual reproduction, offsprings are produced by the union of male and female gametes that is sperm and egg. The male and female gametes contain the genetic material or genes present on the chromosomes which transmit the characteristic traits to the next generation. There are three types of reproduction in plants, namely vegetative, asexual and sexual reproduction. The first one is vegetative reproduction. In this type of reproduction, new plantlets are formed from vegetative that is somatic cells, buds or organs of plant. The vegetative part of plant that is root, stem, leaf or bud gets detached from the parent body and grows into an independent daughter plant. It has only mitotic division, no gametic fusion and daughter plants are genetically similar to the parent plant. So now we are going to see about the vegetative reproduction in a plant called as bryophyllum. You can see in this picture that in bryophyllum small plants are grown at the leaf notches. So these are the leaf notches. So we can see the roots of the small plant which has been grown here and the tip. So there are about three plants which is been here in this leaf. So, in elaborately we are going to see that in the as a video, we are going to see about bryophyllum's vegetative reproduction by leaf notches as a video. So, these are the two videos which has been taken in different area. You can able to see the leaf notches as having small plants in their notches. You can able to see that things clearly. So, this is a real video which has been taken in a plant nearby my home. The so next one is stems. In strawberry, aerial weak stems touch the ground and give off adventitious roots and buds. When the connections with the parent plant is broken, the offspring becomes independent. In vegetative reproduction by stem, a plant which will be growing the stems and it will be entering the soil and this is a parent plant for example, which will be giving rise to a stem nearby and it will be entering the soil and it will be giving rise to a new plant. So, you can able to see that a new plant has been arrived here from the parent plant. For example, we can able to see uh, mentha arvanis that is mint plant which is always growing nearby our area. We can able to see this kind of growth in that plant. The next one is root. Tuberous root, asparagus and sweet potato can be used for vegetative reproduction. You can able to see that the sweet potato is having uh, some tuberous roots which is present here. Next one is bulbils. In some plants, the flower buds modified into a Blobus, which is called as bulbils. So, these are the two pictures. When these falls on the ground, they grow into a new plant, example agave and aloe. The next one is fragmentation. In filamentous algae, breaking of filament into many fragments is called as fragmentation. This is also a two mark question which is coming inside, and uh, these are the before seen examples also will be coming in the two mark questions, and their examples will be coming in one mark question. Please note all these things so that or read yourself, prepare yourself for two mark questions as asexual reproduction and their types ok. So, they are all of uh, these types and their examples also to be noted ok. This one now I am going to here. This is a picture of an spirogyra which is giving rise to new plants by means of fragmentation. So, we are going to see about how the process is going on in fragmentation. So, slowly your spirogyra is present here in that we are going to see that the nucleus is present here and this is septum and the other one is the spiral chloroplast. So, now we are going to see about how the process of fragmentation is going to take place in this video. So, this is a parent spirogyra which is fragmented here. So, the fragmentation takes place in this area. 
so the one plant will be going to uh, form a new spirogyra and other will also will uh, separately go and form a new spirogyra this is a process called as fragmentation next one is fission in this type the parent cell divides into two daughter cells and each cell develops into a new adult organism example amoeba we are going to see a video of amoeba how it is going to fission itself to form a two separate cells we can able to see this here we are seeing a amoeba which is dividing itself into two by means of fission process okay so we are going to see slowly how the amoeba is going to divide into two by means of binary fission the first amoeba came and it has been formed elongated and now the two new amoeba has been formed so i am going to tell it uh, very slowly see this this is amoeba and this is the cytoplasm and uh, this is a nucleus and uh, now the fission starts by means of that the amoeba is elongating itself to form a two separate cell you can able to see the cytoplasm is elongating also the nucleus is elongating and now it is divided into two separate daughter amoebas here this is a whole process which is called as uh, binary fission the next one is budding formation of a daughter individual from a small projection the bud arising on the parent body is called as budding example is you can able to see this picture small small buds has been arised in this picture these are all the things which is natural which is seen in the microscope and this is called as budding so i am going to explain about what is called budding in yeast and this is a parent yeast which is called as yeast cell and from this new yeast will be formed from the same cell where you can able to see the elongated developing bud here so from that yeast cell a new cell will be developing and a new bud will be formed simultaneously to form a chain of buds by this way if it is formed it is called as budding in yeast the next one is regeneration the ability of the lost body of parts of an individual organism to give rise to an whole new organism is called as regeneration it takes place by specialized mass of cells example hydra and palinaria so now we are going to see about regeneration in palinaria this is a palinaria which is divided into three different parts head middle part and tail part the head part will give rise to a new palinaria and the middle part will give rise to another palinaria and the tail part will also give rise to a new whole palinaria by this process the three different palinarias are formed by the fragmentation uh, that have been seen in the plants but here it is called as regeneration this is also an important two mark question it will be coming in the public exam the next one is regeneration hydra a single hydra is here which is divided into two and this the top part will give rise to one hydra and the bottom part will also give rise to another hydra by this way if the process of new organisms are formed it is called as regeneration and it is taking place in hydra so it is called as regeneration in hydra next we are going to asexual reproduction production of offspring by a single parent without the formation and fusion of gametes is called as asexual reproduction this is a two mark question just note it in the mind that and also revise yourself it will be also regularly coming in the public exam what is called asexual reproduction so i am telling the answer production of an offspring by a single parent without the formation and fusion of gametes is called as asexual reproduction it involves only mitotic cell divisions and meiosis does not occur offspring produced by asexual reproduction are not only identical to parents but also exact copies of their parent asexual reproduction occurs by spore formation this is the most common method of asexual reproduction in fungi and bacteria during spore formation a structure called sporangium develops from the fungal hyphae the nucleus divides several times within the sporangium and each nucleus with small amount of cytoplasm develops into a spore the spores are liberated and they develop into a new hyphae after reaching the ground or substratum so now we are going to see about how the spore formation is taking place in rhizophus this is rhizophus and uh, this is rhizopedal hyphae from that sporangia 4 will be arising and this is the sporangium from the sporangium it is digasing to form spores and these are the spores where the spore is uh, coming out from the sporangium and this spore will germinate to form a new hyphae when it is fallen to an substratum and this is called as young mycelium now we are going to see the process in the whole see this is rhizopedal hyphae this is sporangium which is digasing to form a spore and this spore will fall to a substratum 
which will give rise to a new mycelium. So that is the process. So this process is called as process of spore formation and germination in rhizophus. Now we are going to see about sexual reproduction in plants. This is an important two mark question which will be coming in public exam. Please uh, take note of these points. Now I am going to explain about what is called sexual reproduction. The question will be like this. What is sexual reproduction or, or define the process of sexual reproduction. So the answer is sexual reproduction is a process in which two gametes male and female are fused together to produce offspring of their own kind. This itself will give you marks to you. So the next point is in such case both sexes male and female sex organs are needed to produce gametes. The flower is a reproductive organ of a flowering plant. This is an important one mark question. So please take it in mind. To understand this further we need to study the structure of a flower. So we are going to see a clear picture of what is called a flower and what are the parts of the flower. So next one I will tell you in small small parts. The part which is coming first one is pedicel, the second one is sepal, the third one is ovary. The fourth one is which will be giving uh, which will be shown here is ovule. The next one is which will be given as stigma and uh, the next one is petal which is also called as corolla. The next one is andresium which is an important part of the flower. So please take note of that. The important part of the flowers it will be asked in the question paper. So what are the important parts of a flower will be the question. So I will be explaining it detailed one now. The flower is a modified shoot with limited growth to carry out sexual reproduction. A flower consists of four whorls born on a thalamus. These whorls are from outside a calyx consisting of sepals, b corolla consisting of petals, c andresium which is consisting of stamens that only I told you before. These are the yellow color things which is called as stamens. The last one is gynesium or pistil consisting of Carpals that is called as ovary and all coming under this one. This is called as consisting of carpals is called as gynesium or pistil. Okay. So important first part is anther. The anther consists of two important parts, anthers and filament, which is totally called as stem. The second part is pollen grain. The pollen grain which has been cross sectioned and has been shown here. In that pollen grain, the outer part is called as exine. The next part is the inner part is called as indine. The next part is called as germ pore. The next part is called as generative cell. And the other part is called as generative nucleus. The next part is called as vegetative nucleus. And this is the whole picture which is very important will be coming in 5 mark question. So all the parts can be also asked in 1 mark also. Like if you have been giving A, B, C, D as a parts, it will be asked in 1 mark also. So we need to remember the parts and its positions which is present here. Again I will be telling you the upper part is exine. The inner part is in time, the part which is shown here is germ pore, the other part is generative cell and it is generative nucleus and the other one is vegetative nucleus. Please make note of it. The next one is gynesium. This is also coming under 2 mark or 5 mark uh, drawing and or we can it will be asked in 1 mark also like A, B, C, D the same way. We need to remember the diagram. The first part is sigma, the second part is style. The outer part is ovary. The inner part which is shown inside the pink color is there. No, it is called as female gamete. Now we are going to see about the structure of an ovule. This is the structure of an ovule. Now we are going to see about the parts. The first part is chalsa, which is a nutritive part which will give to nutrients to the inner cell. The next part is antipodal cells. The third part is which is also called a secondary nucleus. This is important one more question will be showing uh, asking you later. I will be explaining you also later. The next part is egg. And the next part is synergids which are giving nutrients to the egg. The next part is funicle which is holding the whole structure of the ovule. And this is an important part which is called as microphile. By this way only the fusion is going to take place. We will be seeing in later. And these are the integuments which is helping for the fusion to take place. The next part is which is also called as embryo sac. This helps to prevent egg to be very safe in position. Last part which is we are going to see is nucellus. This nucellus will give nutrients to the whole inner side of the part which is called as egg, secondary nucleus and synergies for everything. This nucellus will give nutrients further. There are two types of pollination we are going to see. The first pollination is self pollination. The other pollination is cross pollination. First one is self pollination. How we are going to see about the self pollination is this is a flower. In this flower we are having an anther and also sigma. The pollen grains 
from the same flower the anther which will be transferring the pollen grains to the same flower uh, that sigma it is called as self pollination but here if you are going to see about the cross pollination there are two different flowers of the same plant but also the same kind of the different plant so in this way if a pollen grain is coming from the anther and the pollen grain is going to the sigma of the other flower it is called as cross pollination this is we need to clearly understand these two process because this will be asked in the five mark questions the first one is self pollination self pollination is also known as autogamy this is one mark question very important question it will be regularly asked in the public exams self pollination is also called as autogamy the transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma of same flower or another flower grown on the same plant it is known as self pollination this is two mark question what is self pollination or what is called as autogamy is a two mark question so example is hibiscus it will be also asked in one mark what is the example for autogamy you can tell that it is hibiscus so what are the advantages of self pollination now we are going to say about the advantages self pollination is possible in bisexual flowers bisexual flowers are flowers which is having both male and female gametes in them they are called as bisexual flowers flowers do not depend on agents for pollination any agents like wind or any other thing they don't need that things there is no wastage of pollen grains disadvantages of self pollination the seeds are less in numbers so actually we need more seeds but in this pollination we will be having only less number of seeds. the endosperm is minute therefore the seeds produce weak plants so the plants which are produced by this way will not sustain or will be dying in quickly by because of many diseases will be attacked from them so this is a big uh, disadvantage the next one is new variety of plants cannot be produced new varieties means the variety which is coming later will be self sustainable with the environment so that kind of varieties cannot be produced by means of this pollination it's a important question which will be coming in five mark the next one is cross pollination again it is a two mark question cross pollination is a transfer of pollen from the anthers of a flower to the sigma of flowers on another plant of the same species example apples grape plum etc and we are going to see about the advantages of cross pollination the seeds produced as a result of cross pollination develop and germinate properly and grow into better plants that is cross pollination leads to the production of new varieties like disease resistant plants or the plants which can give more yield in their plants these are coming under uh, advantages of cross pollination the next one is more viable seeds are produced if we have been uh, giving sowing seeds in a field two or three seeds are growing its weak seed if all the seeds has been growing they are called as viable seeds so like that seeds uh, this pollination can able to produce the next important thing is disadvantages of cross pollination pollination may fail due to distance barrier because you can able to uh, pollen grains can want to travel for a longer distance if it is not going means the pollination cannot able to happen the next one is more wastage of pollen grains that means if it is traveling from one plant to another plant only two or three pollen grains can able to transfer if uh, the remaining things will be uh, totally collapsed this is a big disadvantage it may introduce some unwanted characteristics like uh, the plants uh, fruit cannot able to give a characteristics of what we need like it will be a sweetening thing maybe or it, the color may change so like that it can able to give their own characteristics but what we expect will not able to come the next point is flowers depend on external agencies for pollination if the wind is not there the pollination cannot able to happen if the water is not there the pollination will not happen like that this is the disadvantage of cross pollination if the external agencies are not there the pollination will not happen what are the agents of cross pollination because we told in the last point only we need some agents for cross pollination in order to bring about cross pollination it is necessary that the pollen should be carried from one flower to another of a different plant so for that we need some agents this takes place through the agents like animals insects wind and water so first one we are going to see is wind pollination which is also called as anemophily and this is asked in one mark and also in two marks straightly they will ask what is called as anemophily the explanation is this one the pollination with the help of wind is called as anemophily this is one mark question until this is one mark question so we are going to explaining means this is the next answer points the anemophilous flowers produce enormous amount of pollen grains the pollen grains are small smooth dry and light in weight pollen of such plants are blown off distance for more than 1000 kilometers and this is a very good example for uh, wind pollination anemophily in this picture you can able to see the release of pollen by a conifer you can able to see small small pollen has been spreading through the air to a longer distance so this is an example for wind pollination
The stigmas are comparatively large, protruding and sometimes hairy to trap the pollen grains, example grasses and some cacti. So we are going to see about things. This is how the pollen grains has been split in the air. So you can see that from that cacti, the things are just been split, the pollen grains are been spreading in the air, you can able to see that. And see here also that cacti is spreading some pollen grains in the air. The next one is pollination by insects that is called as entomophily. Pollination with the help of insects like honeybees, flies are called as entomophily. This is important one mark and two mark. So the one mark is the first point, the two mark is coming in the second point. So please listen that. To attract insects, these flowers are bright colored, have swell and nectar, the pollen grains are large in size, the exine is fitted, spiny, etc. So they can be adhered firmly on the uh, sticky stigma. Approximately 80% of the pollination done by the insects is carried by honeybees. This is also coming under a one more question. So the uh, dash of the pollination done by the insect is carried by dash. So they will be asked like that. 80% is answer and the honeybees is the next answer. Okay. The next one is how the pollination of by insects takes place. Again, we are going to see the process. See this picture. You can able to see cross pollination. The pollen grains are present in the see the the flower in the middle. The honeybee is trying to get that pollen grains. Uh, drink some honey will be going there. So pollen from the stamens stick to the bee as it visits a flower to collect the food. So in the second picture you can see that the pollen grains are sticked in the legs of that insect. The bee travels to another plant of the same type. From that, what happens? The pollen on the bee sticks to the crystal of the flower on the other plant. So by this way, if the pollination takes place, it is called as pollination by insects and it is also called as entomophile. Next one is pollination by water. It is also called as hydrophily. Again, it is a one more question and the process is coming in a two more question. So again, I am telling you, the pollination with the help of water is called as hydrophily. This takes place in aquatic plants. Pollen grains are produced in large numbers. Pollen grains float on surface of water till they land on the stigma of the female flowers, example, Hybella and Carcinaria. So this is a picture of how the pollination takes place in hydrophily. You can able to see that the male flower is present in this plant and the pollen grains which is uh, coming out from this plant will be floating nearby and will be reaching to the female flower by means of water and uh, by this way the pollination takes place in this forest pollination by water or hydrophily. So pollination by animals or it is also called as zoophily. When pollination takes place with the help of animals, it is called as zoophily. Flowers of such plant attract animals by their bright color, size, scent, etc. Example, sunbirds pollinate flowers of canna, garantioli, etc. Squirrels pollinate flowers of silk cotton trees. So these are the important one more questions which will be asked in the exam. The examples for zoophily, I will telling you, sunbird pollinates flower of flowers of canna and uh, galadoli and squirrels will pollinate flowers of silk cotton tree. This is important one more question. So this is a picture of a plant which is helping to pollinate a plant. So this is how the zoophily takes place. So next we are going for important process which is coming under five more question. The process of fertilization. So this diagram is also very important, which will be asked in five more question. We need to take important things, the parts in the mind. They, they will be asking us to draw the picture and also if they are given the pictures, we need to mark the parts. Okay. From the top to bottom, we are going to see the parts. From the top, the first one is pollen grain, the next one is stigma, the next one is stipe, the yellow colored tube is called as pollen tube. The, then the antipodal cells, secondary nucleus, synergies, male gametes, embryo sac, egg, integuments, and microphile. This microphile will play a major role in the uh, process of fertilization. That is how we are going to see in the next slide. So, this is how the microscopic picture will be seen in the pollen tubes. Uh, this pollen tube is connected very well, and you can able to see the pollen grains there, and the pollen tube by means of that it will be going to the uh, way where it is going to go for the microphile and for the egg. The next picture we are going to see about that. So this is how the process of fertilization takes place. The pollen grains will be growing to form pollen tubes and it will be growing towards that and will be entering the microphile and get inside the egg and the process of fertilization will be initiated there. And the whole process, this is a picture, we 
will not be seen anywhere else because this is depicted only by means of uh, speech only. Now we are able to understand that how the process by means of this animated diagram. So this is how the picture has been explained. The stigma is present there and the pollen tube will be slowly growing towards the ovary and the pollen tube S1 or S2, the S1 one, any one can only grow. So this is how the process of this picture is taken place. Okay. So fertilization in plants, this is how the explanation is going to take place, it's a very important question. So please make note of that things. The first point is pollen grains reach the right stigma and begin to germinate. The second point is pollen grain forms a small tube-like structure called as pollen tube which emerges through the germ hole. That is the first we have been seen in the diagram. If you are going back in the video, you are able to see that. Now the third point is the contents of the pollen grain move into the tube. Okay. The last point is pollen tube flows through the tissues of the stigma and style and finally reaches the ovule through the microfile. I told you the before slide itself. What is the important use of microfile? This microfile allows the pollen tube to get inside the uh, ovule. Okay, so that you can, the process of fertilization can take place. After the entry of pollen tube into the ovary, these things will happen. Vegetative cells degenerates and the generative cells divides to form two sperms or male gametes. Tip of pollen tube bursts and the two sperms enter the embryo sac. One sperm fuses with the egg syngamy and forms a diploid zygote. This is an important one more question. The other sperm fuses with the secondary nucleus which is also called as triple fusion to form primary endosperms nucleus which is diploid in nature. These two are the important two more questions which is regularly asked in the public exam. So it is not a very big issue. I will be telling you the same points. One sperm fuses with the egg syngamy and forms diploid zygote. The other sperm fuses with the secondary nucleus, it is called as triple fusion. Now the question is, what is triple fusion? So the answer is, the one sperm fuses with the egg syngamy and forms diploid zygote. The other sperm fuses with the secondary nucleus, it is called as triple fusion. If you are writing like this, you can get full marks to form the primary endosperm nucleus, which is diploid in nature. Since two types of fusion, syngamy and triple fusion take place in an embryo sac, the process is termed as double fertilization. This is also an important two more question. The question is, what is double fertilization? So the answer is this one. Since two types of fusion, syngamy and triple fusion take place in an embryo sac, the process is termed as double fertilization. After triple fusion, primary endosperm nucleus develops into an endosperm. Endosperm provides food to the developing embryo. Later, the synergies and the antipolar cells degenerate. So, these are the significance of fertilization. It will be also coming in 2 more question or in 5 more question. What are the significance of fertilization? The first point is it stimulates the body to develop into fruit. So, regularly we have been having fruits in our plants and the trees. That fruit is uh, coming out by means of this process. The next point is it helps in development of new characters from two different individuals. So, post fertilization changes, after the fertilization has been over, what are the changes we are going to see? The first is, the ovule develops into a seed. The second one is, the integuments of the ovule develop into a seed coat. The seed coat, the outer covering of the seed is called a seed coat. That is, I think, but the integuments are only uh, changed to a seed coat. The third point is, the ovary enlarges and develops into a fruit. The fruit what we are eating is coming from the ovary. Okay. The last one is the seed contains a future plant or embryo which develops into a seedling under appropriate conditions only. What is called appropriate conditions? If you are going to put a seed in a field, it will not grow suddenly. It needs some conditions like rain or some other things. That kind of conditions are called as appropriate conditions. That seed contains uh, this going to develop is called as seedling under appropriate condition. That is the right I am given you there. Okay. So, uh, until this, we have been learned what is reproduction and what is reproduction in plants and what are the types of reproduction and how reproduction takes place, what is called as fertilization and everything, I, I think you are able to understand that and if you have been understanding this whole lesson, you can able to answer this self-evaluation. So, like this, you create your own questions and answer yourself and practice yourself so that you can able to understand the whole lesson. Like, even you can now, uh, also have this kind of diagrams. And by your own, you can draw yourself and uh, label the plots as A, B, C, D and you will try to mark your answers. Now, I will tell you the answers of these uh, questions. Like this, you also try yourself. 
the first one is identify the parts of A, B, C and D. The A part is exine, B part is indine, C part is nutritive cell and D part is nutritive nucleus. So by this way, if it is wrong also, you can go back to this video and check yourself the parts which has been available in this video. Okay. The second one is name two organisms which reproduce through budding. So we have learned earlier in this video that budding takes place in asexual reproduction. The first uh, organism is what it does? It is yes, yeast. I showed you that uh, photos. Uh, it is budding and uh, animations and all you can you have been seen there. So the first uh, organism is yeast. The second organism is hydra. Okay. The third question is after fertilization, the ovary develops into dash. The last only we have, we have been studied now only the ovary develops into fruit. Yes, that is the correct answer. Fourth question is Palneria reproduces by dash. Palneria reproduces by asexual method. This is the fourth answer because we have been studied in that Palneria will be divided into three parts. Head will be giving to one part uh, which is giving to one organism. Middle part will give rise to another organism and the last tail part will also give rise to another organism. So this is what you call as asexual reproduction. So the whole thing if you have been remembering only you can tell answer this question. So, for this question, the answer is asexual reproduction. The fifth point is the essential part of a flower or dash. The parts of the flower we have been studying, you can go to the video, you can able to see that. I told you in the video itself that the essential parts are the stigma, style and ovary and the anther and the pollen tube and pollen grains. These are the essential parts which is giving importance to the reproduction. So, they are called as essential parts and the non-essential parts also I will add here. The non-essential parts are corolla and sepals which is only taking place for attraction of the insects and is not taking place in reproduction so they are called as non-essential parts so the answer for this one is the essential part is stamen and ovary okay so also you can also add as anther and stigma we can also add this here so basically the both things andresium and gynesium so what you are going to write it in this dash andresium and gynesium these are the two parts which are the essential parts of the flower I hope that you enjoyed this uh, video, you studied also this video very well and we can meet it in the next class. Thank you.